I'm David with the Humble Marksman channel here on YouTube and this is the Smith & Wesson CSX. These are my first shots. Are you ready? Stand by. So I shot the gun yesterday, slept on it, I'm waking up and I feel like I need to append my range video and let you know that I think this gun is brilliant, it's just not ready. The design is pretty good, but there's just a number of things with it that's, that's kind of gone wrong. Like it's probably my favorite feeling gun in hand. It shoots really well, it's accurate, but as you'll see in the video here, and I gotta add this, my buddy Harrison over at Harry's Holster sent me this photo because I didn't bother putting the small back strap on. Like, this is attention to detail that they just didn't have when they made the gun. Uh, I had issues with the 10 round magazines. With the super tight 10 round magazine, I might not even go. I, I can't get it to seat. It's, I can't get it to lock in. Like I'd have to have the slide open. 12 round magazine, no problem, locks in. Well, I love the gun and I think it's great shooting. I wish it was optics ready. They really kind of screwed this one up and the Gen 2s are probably going to be improved in every way. It should have been a 12 round gun, but that said, here's your video. Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm David and this is the Smith & Wesson CSX. Now the safe direction is behind you, so the muzzle's going to be pointed at the camera a lot. It's on a tripod. Everything is cool. This is what peak performance looks like. You're watching me and I'm watching you. To my YouTube manual reviewer, you already know the drill. You're watching a video about a topic you know nothing about. So we're standing on a range. It is safe, and this is an unmodified gun straight from the box, straight from the factory. I wanted to get this video out quickly to you guys because this is a new product. Uh, Smith & Wesson did kind of a cold launch on this product, so there's really not a lot of good qualified information on the net right now. So I did what every YouTuber is going to do in my position, which is buy an early model of it, run to the range, and slap together a video to get it up fast for you guys. To that point, it'd mean a lot to me if you could subscribe. I will always try to keep these videos worthy of your time and worthy of mine. And I'm trying to get that silver play button for 100,000 subscribers each year. So let's talk about the CSX and what it is. It is obviously an alloy framed, single action only, concealed carry piece. And it is, well, it's, it's kind of weird, if I'm honest. Uh, it's not as good looking as like the Kimber or the Sig 938s, but it's kind of marketing to that crowd of like the old like uh, Colt Mustang style guns or the P938, those kinds of things. But they gave it the styling of like their M&P Big Brothers, but it's not an M&P. It's something entirely different. And to that point, none of the Shield Plus stuff works on this gun. The holsters don't work. The magazines don't work. All of this is brand new. It is ambidextrous, it's convertible, it comes with a different mag catch for you lefties out there, but both the slide release and the manual safety are ambi, which is quite an accomplishment in such a small package. So talking about what you get in the box when you get this, you get the extra mag catch, you're gonna get two magazines, a 10 rounder and a 12 rounder. The 12 rounder is gonna have a lip on it, as you see here, and it actually, it rides pretty darn low in the gun. So. It's not a whole lot of extra width going to the 12 rounder as it is just using the flush fit 10 rounder. It's really not saving you much. So like this should have been a 12 round gun in my opinion. The frame should just be bigger and they should just let it be a 12 round gun. More on that later because unfortunately this gun did have a little bit of an issue and we'll go into that here in a bit. So talking about the ergonomics on it, this is kind of weird. Like initially when I got the gun and picked it up and just kind of, ooh, ah, it fits my hand nice. Really like how the sculpt of the Beaver tail is at the back there. That's actually really well done. Super, super aggressive back strap that's changeable. Super aggressive front strap exactly where you want all that stuff to be. And you look at it and you think, wow, that, that grip, 
sure is long front to back. I might be able to get my support hand on it and you can't. It's actually kind of a tease because you can't really do anything with it. Like you're, you're effectively doing the hand on hand style shooting that you'd be doing with like the P365 and the other pistols in the segment but it just gives you that false hope that you'll somehow be able to get your hand on the gun. Now that said, the balance of this gun is very good. The shootability of this gun is excellent. I would say that it probably performs better than other guns in the segment as far as shootability is con concerned, likely due to the extra four ounces this is packing on against other polymer framed pistols in this segment. Going into the controls that we get, uh, the single action trigger, is, it, it's kind of false. It looks like it's a Colt trigger or like a sliding 1911 style trigger, I should say, but it's got a little uh, safety right there. Throw up some B-roll of me pulling the trigger slowly. It's actually a hinge trigger, guys. It's not a sliding trigger like a 1911. And to that point, if you try to pull the trigger like it's a 1911, you'll be rewarded with low shots. The safeties are ambi and they're actually really well sculpted like it feels very good to sweep the safety as you pull it off I would have no reservations about the fact this is a safety single action only gun because the safeties are so well designed The trigger pull as I mentioned I did put this on a trigger gauge last night when I was looking at it and it's pulling on my example between about five and a half and five and three quarter pounds which for this caliber of gun this size of gun that's an acceptable trigger pull weight and since I've been shooting it I put about 150 rounds through it before talking to the camera the trigger has improved it actually has lightened up a little bit I'll have to I'll put on the screen what it is when I get back home going up to the slide that's where things kind of get interesting I've shot it and it has loosened up a bit but it was super stiff like manipulating the slide was really challenging when I first got the gun but after putting about 150 rounds in it it has loosened up a good bit it has the Armor Knight finish, which is an excellent nitride finish from Smith & Wesson on there, so it looks really good. The, the cuts are like a updated M&P cuts. I'm sorry, it's so dark out here. It's, it's right before dusk and the clouds came in right as it got to the range, so thanks Mother Nature. You're welcome. The sights are a three dot variety, which is terrible, uh, and it is not available in an optics ready format, which made me really, really sad. Like, why are we doing guns that aren't optic ready these days? But it goes back to my earlier point of this being pointed at the Kimber uh, Solo or the P938 crowd, like guys who, who just want a pretty gun, they're never gonna shoot it probably, and they're not gonna want an optic on it anyway. As I've already mentioned, shooting the gun is pretty nice. Uh, the ammo that I was using, the very finest in steel cased ammo, straight from Russia, the Tula ammo, not very good in this. Uh, the point of impact with that projectile on this gun was uh, about an inch lower than the Winchester white box that I had left in my car at 10 yards. So, 10 yards, uh, that's about my mean point of impact using the uh, Winchester white box 115 and 10 yards using the Wolf. That's about my mean point of impact, to say, right there. I think I was compensating with my hold. That, I broke my wrist up uh, too early, so. As I mentioned, the, the trigger took some kind of getting used to. Uh, it wasn't as accurate. It's not a precision, since it's single action only, I was thinking in my mind, ooh, I'm gonna be able to shoot itty bitty grips. Not really, I mean, it's still a 3.1 inch barrel, so it is still mostly a self-defense tool, but it is capable if you are making hits at greater distance. I just wish the sights were a little bit more refined for it. CSX 25 yard plate. First try, here we go. Come on, don't make me look like a jerk on the internet. Oh yeah, there it is, baby. I didn't think that the trigger reset, which you've probably heard famously, is super weak and there's kind of a false reset. I didn't think that that was gonna be an issue for me because the throw is so short, but I short stroked the trigger as I was shooting the gun, which was a bit of a surprise to me. So that's kind of the what it is portion of the video. Now we'll talk about some things that are kind of weird about the gun and makes me wonder what Smith was doing on how they launched this gun. First and foremost, this was a cold launch, meaning that we didn't know that this gun was coming out until it was leaked onto Reddit. And then all of a sudden there was a nut and fancy video and MD Polo basically dropped a YouTube video as well. And to that point, there is zero holster support at the time of me filming this. I could not find a holster for this gun. I'm still gonna try and find one. So that was kind of an odd choice of how Smith decided to launch the gun. Other weird thing is the aesthetics. I like the aesthetics, don't get me wrong, but I'm kind of that weird like classic duty utilitarian guy. So it looks like utilitarian gun, but it's a little bit classier because it's an alloy frame single action. 
it seems like they should have gone like the pretty gun route or the hard utilitarian gun route, but instead we get kind of this weird middle ground. We'll see if the market responds to it positively. The other thing is that I mentioned this should have been a 12 round gun. And part of the reason I say that is the 10 round magazines are lousy. So as you can see here with the footage on screen of me trying to load the 10 round magazine, getting the 10th round into the magazine is a struggle. And I don't mean, oh, he's got soft computer hands. And while that is true, uh, I was using an Uplula mag loader and I still had a hard time getting the last round in. It was an absolute struggle for about the first two or three times that I loaded this magazine. It loosened up a little, but the problem is that the mag tube would swell when it was loaded to capacity with the super tight 10 round magazine I might not even go I, I can't get it to seat it's I can't get it to lock in like I'd have to have the slide open to get it to go home you cannot seat this magazine with 10 rounds in it with the slide forward so the 10 round is basically like a nine round magazine because it, it's just too much. The magazine is stretching out. So Smith needs to fix their 10 round magazines because this thing is junk. The 12 round, which gives me a full three finger grip on the gun is a beautiful magazine. I just wish that it didn't have this stupid, like we're not gonna use this magazine without this uh, sleeve on it. So why not just mold the base plate so that it fits to the grip rather than put this dumb sleeve on it. It's not like there's gonna be a longer 12 round version of the gun and if there is and it's optics ready i'm pissed at you smith but it underscores the point that the 12 round magazine was magic i could shoot it 12 plus one it wasn't a problem it will go in with the slide forward so what has smith and wesson accomplished with this gun it's kind of a answer to a question i don't think anybody was asking but i think it's a happy accident because i mean i quite like the gun i am going to get a holster for it i'm going to shoot it some more with some carry ammunition see if i can't learn to shoot the trigger better on it i wasn't getting groups as small as i would like them to be but I was able to make hits at distance, which was fine. So those are my first shots with the Smith & Wesson CSX. Let me know what your questions are about this gun in the comments, and I will see if I can't get them answered in a full review at some point down the line. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you on the next one.